This is the Canon 514XL and I found this at a market this morning in Cape Town. I had never heard of this camera before so when I bought it I was quite surprised to see how popular this is especially on YouTube so I'm quite happy that I found it. It was 200 Rand at this market by town and that is equivalent to about eight or nine pounds so considering that I believe that this is working properly I'm very happy to have found and purchased it. Now to give you a brief background before I show you all the functions of this camera I've been collecting Super 8 cameras for quite some time now and I even have some Super 8 film but I've been too afraid to use it and it was the same for general film photography. I was quite afraid to start so I know that what I need to do is just get started and then things will go or move on swiftly from there. And with all the collections or with all the cameras that I have collected over the years I had settled on this one here, my Canon Auto Zoom 318M. And even though it doesn't have the advanced features that some of my other cameras have, it's incredibly light and it's small and it's easy to transport. I thought that this would be great to take with me when we go to the mountains and stuff. It's small, I could just take it out, do some filming and then just put it away without it really having an effect on my activities. And since I found this one here, which is more advanced, has more features, appears to be more stable and more robust, it is almost as light, even though it is slightly larger. It is just as light, almost, not quite as light, but it's light enough and it feels good in the hand. I've already put the batteries inside of here, but I'll show you the battery compartment. It's open like that. There they are. Now, I am quite embarrassed with the batteries that I have inside of here. These came inside a remote control and I have no more appropriate batteries you'd want good quality batteries in here because there's a motor there's a light meter there's the aperture everything needs to work through these batteries including the power zoom so it's two double a batteries which fits in over there if you find one at a market or a thrift store make sure that there's no corrosion and if there is make sure that you understand how to clean that safely and appropriately the super 8 cartridge goes in there which i'll show you in a bit this eyepiece tends to get stuck in there the batteries are now in the way that you can check whether your batteries are in good condition is once you've turned it on, mine is currently on number one single frame. So this is off. Once you've turned it on, you can touch or you can press down on this battery check button and you can look through the eyepiece and above your field of view, while you're pushing your battery check button, when the camera is turned on, you should see a red light indicating on the top. Mine doesn't have that and I think that's telling me that the, cap, that the batteries are not appropriate. Please do forgive the light changing behind me. We've got natural light behind us here. Right, so let's turn this on, which it is. So off, on, you've got two frame rates. You've got nine frames per second and 18 frames per second. Sounds like a lovely purr at nine frames per second and 18 frames per second. You also have the option to switch to one single shot. So if you wanna do photos or stop motion, let's take that back to on. There is a self timer. So in order to set the self timer, you hold this lock button down and wind the self timer. You would use the self timer if you want to record yourself. For example, if you put this on a tripod, you set your focus and then you go to the frame. While this is pressed down, take it, let go. And then when you're ready, you can push this button here. It'll give you 10 seconds before it starts recording for 10 seconds. The lens runs from 9 to 45 millimeters and you can zoom with this knob here with this handle you can take it like that and the zooming happens internally so the camera doesn't move in and out the camera the lens doesn't move in and out so 9 to 45 at 45 millimeters you can also set to macro and I've looked through the viewfinder through the eyepiece and it really is a macro lift it up and take it through and you've got macro 
while you're at infinity, you can check that out. Pull it out to take it back to the normal zooming, 45 down to nine. You can pull it out and also do a macro at nine millimeters. Take it back to 45. I've read that you set it to 45 millimeters to set your focus after which you can zoom out and go to a wide angle. And the way that I think I will use this is that I will predominantly shoot at wide angle at around 10 to infinity to make sure that I am hitting focus. There's no need, at least for what I think I'll be using for, I don't think there'll be any need to really zoom in on a subject. And this is how you focus over here. Again, apologies for the lights changing behind me. You've also got your power zoom buttons, wide to telephoto, and this will only run while you've got the trigger engaged. So we're currently at nine, which is wide. Let's take it to telephoto. If you look at the little handle. And the instructions say it takes about 10 seconds to go from one to the other. This is the film indicator. Once you open this, it'll take you to S. And once you put film inside and start shooting, it'll run through to your through your 50 or so feet of film that's in your in your super 8 cartridge once you open this again even if your cartridge is not fully filmed through it'll take you back to s so do keep that in mind the ee lock is pretty cool so you don't have manual exposure functions on here. The closest that you're gonna to get to manual exposure functions is if, for example, this EE lock is four, if you've got your subject in front of the sun. If you shoot towards your subject and they're in front of the sun, they're gonna come out silhouetted or they're gonna come out severely underexposed. So what you can do is you can point your camera to a subject or some area that is properly exposed for those skin tones that you want to capture. You can point it at that then hold the EE lock down. Then you can go back to pointing at your subject, film your subject, and they will be appropriately exposed for whatever you've pointed your camera to. So that's one way to overcome avoiding your subject becoming silhouetted if they're in front of the sun. And that is, but that's as much as you're gonna get with manual exposure control of this camera. This is an automatic control and because this is an auto exposure camera the most control apart from the ee lock that you will have is being able to see what your camera is doing on the top right hand corner on your field of view there's an indicator telling you your f-stop value that your camera is selecting for the scenario and this runs i believe from f1.4 through to f32 there are also indicators at beyond f32 and before f1.4 that will tell you whether you're overexposing or underexposing or whether you're in a situation that is too overexposed or too underexposed which is helpful and also given that this is an f1.4 lens and i'll be shooting with 500t film i think this will be really cool to see how it performs indoors and then also with regard to the camera's ability to read what ASA you're shooting with. I believe the camera doesn't acknowledge higher than 160 ASA or ISO. And given that I'll be putting 500T in here, I will be overexposing my film by about two stops, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because the literature that I've read on this particular film states that you're better off overexposing by one or two stops. So it might just be that it works out almost perfectly but only time will tell. This camera was designed with tungsten film in mind. You can put this switch over here at the tungsten sign when you're shooting indoors, which means that there'll be no filter internally applied inside. And back in the day, you would need to take the switch over to the sunlight, which puts an orange filter internally so that when you're shooting outside, your tungsten film doesn't come out, doesn't process blue. It has a more appropriate white balance. But now that, Super 8 film is now color negative. You don't really need to worry about that too much. And I've read that you're, you're pretty all right just keeping this on with no filter because you can sort that out in the processing with the lab. So open this up again. I have this test roll of Super 8 film. This is what Super 8 film, a cartridge looks like. You place it in like that. It took me a very long time to find, to find this roll of film that I can use to test with goes in there and this is what it sounds like. I'm gonna switch this to nine. I'm not gonna use too much because this is the only roll of test film that I have. Let's put that down there. This little eyepiece always gets stuck in there. 
I think that is about as much as I know about this camera right now. Now that I'm saying that, I am very much looking forward to putting some film in here. I am, I hope I'm more on the excited side than I am on the nervous side for shooting Super 8. And we have some activities planned that I think would be pretty decent to bring this out and bring this with and just film some memories. Before I move on or end things off, I think I might've forgotten to mention that this is a diopter. So you can set this diopter to be appropriate for your eyesight. And once you've set the appropriate reading through this eyepiece, you can then lock it in with the inner little ring in there. You can take it so it doesn't move out and in again, unless you intentionally recalibrate your diopter. I hope that this video is as short as I was planning for it to be. I just really wanted a little sneak peek of this beautiful, lovely, compact and light camera. I'll be sure to report back in the future once I do start using it. And perhaps when we're out and about, I might get Julia to just film with her phone, just record me using it every now and then, but not too much because the whole point of this is just to take it out during relaxing times and you know, family time and stuff like that. So at least that's what I think it's gonna be for. But I'll be sure to keep you posted. I hope you found the information in this video helpful, useful, entertaining, and we'll leave it at that. Thanks so much for taking the time to be here, folks. I do appreciate it. Don't forget to keep taking photos, keep making videos, take care of yourselves, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.